Greetings, ladies and gentlemen and friends. I hope that is true. Hey, it's a Monday evening. I trust that uh, the weekend uh, was better than average and that Monday got the marketplace off to a good start. And maybe you might even experience a little bit of a miracle or wonder this week. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Hey, uh, what are you reading? Just, uh, that's a checkup. Uh, you should be reading something. And uh, I just simply ask, and I could go through a number of things that I have been reading. I spend some of the time going through Cowboys and Indians, which along with True West is one of my favorite magazines because we're very much into uh, Western lore and tradition. And I continue to read. In effect, you know, uh, uh, my friend Grant Collier and uh, his book, uh, which is, you know, it's about horses, you know. <laughs> Horses and feelings and you know, things you can learn from horses. And, of course, today I'm going to continue with uh, Randy Helm. And uh, we thought about that this weekend, but we decided it would be a good thought right now to give us some time for reflection. So uh, I will be reading to you, again, a little uh, section from uh, Lessons from Horses and uh, that's exactly where I'm going to get the title of today's little thoughtful idea. Uh, what would it do to you if you know, if you knew, and maybe if you now know that you should be dead? <laughs> if you knew that, if you were pretty sure of that, but thankfully, gracefully, wonderfully, you're not. What would that do to you? Well, that's the uh, conversation for this Monday evening, and uh, the program begins right now. And here we go. Lessons from Horses, Randy Helm. Uh, when things fall apart... And I would love to show you the picture, which you could have, which is there is a mountain trail, which if you go uh, more than a few feet from the uh, trail, where there is no railing, there is a long, long way down. And, uh, you know, as I said, Randy is a cowboy creature, uh, horse trainer, teacher, and a uh, up. A preacher, cowboy creature, teacher, and preacher. And uh, Psalm 61, 2 says, From the end of the earth I will call to you. When my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Here's Randy's story. In 1998, my dad and I took four horses and packed into a remote area in the Arizona Bloody Basin Wilderness for a mule deer hunt. Isn't that quite a name for a place? Our camp was at the end of a steep canyon where Houston Creek joined the Verde River. The abandoned steep road winding into the bottom of the canyon served as a decent trail. We packed in tents, rifles, bedrolls, and enough food to last a week. Being there with Dad was a little surreal. Now, Dad had been coming to this remote spot since he was a boy and first brought my brother and me down into the canyon when I was seven. Some of my favorite memories were formed in this canyon, the banks of the Verde River. Even though I had been there more times than I could count, it, it never seemed to get old. Now, at 43 years old, the familiar sound of the river gently lulled me to sleep. Early Friday morning, we saddled up our horses and set out on a trail that wound up over a precipitous granite ridge that descended to the river crossing. I rode a part draft BLM gelding named Outlaw while leading a pack horse. As Outlaw and I topped the ridge, I couldn't help but notice the sheer drop-off and sound of the rushing water below. I'd walked over the trail many times, but on horseback, the view was even more amazing. Suddenly, Outlaw lost his footing, and as his feet scrambled for traction, he reared up in an attempt to turn around. 
At that point, I knew we were going over. I kicked myself free from the stirrups and dove from the saddle, hitting the granite with a thud as I started sliding headfirst down the side of a cliff. I could hear Outlaw sliding and rolling toward me, and I remember clearly thinking, this is how I will die. I vaguely remember the moment Outlaw's 1,400-pound body caught up with mine. Everything went black as I was knocked unconscious the moment he rolled over me. When I came to, I could hear my dad yelling my name and trying to make it down to where I was lying. I struggled to get up and finally was able to stand. Once on my feet, I looked down to the bottom of the cliff. Outlaw was upside down in a pile of boulders with all four feet in the air. I was certain he was badly injured, and I mentally prepared myself for what seemed inevitable. I would have to put him down. I slowly limped down to where he was laying. He looked at me with bewildered but big, kind eyes as I inspected him. Surprisingly, I couldn't find any significant injuries. I petted him for a moment and uh, then gently tugged on the reins to see if he could free himself. I watched as he miraculously wriggled free from the rocks and stood up. By this time, blood had soaked through both my gloves and my right pant leg. I knew I was hurt bad, but had no idea how badly, and it would be at least two days before I could get any kind of medical help. I somehow managed to get in the saddle, and this amazing horse, which had every reason to distrust my judgment, carried me for the next six hours through three river crossings, up canyons, and over mountains. After a few hours of riding, I started going into shock as a result of internal injuries and crushed, severed muscles. Outlaw carried me on as I fought excruciating pain and uncontrollable chills and shaking. To this day, I wonder how much pain he was in because he never showed it. Late that night, we made it to an old lying cabin called Horse Camp. As I lay there in the warmth of the cabin, the chills and uh, shaking began to subside. With the crisis behind me, I was able to reflect on what had happened earlier in the day. It was only then I realized that there was no way I should be alive. Having a close call with death tends to give us a bit of perspective. Perspective reminds us that uh, we should be grateful and often reminds us that there are definitely worse things. Surviving a horse rolling over you on a rugged remote mountain is easier than surviving the death of someone you love, trying to pick up the pieces after a divorce, battling a life-threatening disease or the helpless pain of watch your child making uh, choices that would destroy and could destroy their lives and future. The pain when things fall apart in life seems unbearable, and the recovery often seems impossible. Yet we have no option but to get up and do what we can to move forward. Whether it is limping or crawling, we have to press on. You know, when things fall apart, we don't have time to think about what or why or how. Instead, we move into survival mode. Survival mode is not always a bad thing. However, if surviving is the way we live the rest of our lives, we stop living. Surviving the ordeal is the first step. The next step is when you realize that your world just went black and you hurt all over. At that point, you have no option but to get up with a determination to see what you need to do to move forward. We have to pick up the pieces and limp, walk, or ride away. Survival mode should only last as long as it takes us to realize we have survived. We cannot wait until the pain is gone or we feel good. The sooner we can move away from the cause the sooner the pain will diminish. And the pain, it can be excruciating, but we can't afford to give ourselves any other option than moving forward. We may walk with a limp, but we must walk. 
For months following my accident, I had to uh, spend hours each week in physical therapy. I dreaded the pain associated with getting better. But I knew without that pain, I would have to live with limitations and greater pain. You see, shock is when our body starts shutting down so it can deal with the trauma. When shock begins to take hold because of internal injuries, we must do our best to go on. When we are in shock, we don't function well and life is a little blurry. Whether physical pain or emotional pain, shock will subside with time, support, and healing. The greatest internal injuries are those that are emotional. They too will pass as we begin to heal and take one day and perhaps one step at a time. We may walk a little different, but we will walk. Great line. We may walk a little different, but we will walk. I wish I were more like Outlaw. Without hesitation, he went over the steep trail he had lost his footing on. He stood still as I worked my way back into the saddle, and to top it all off, he carried me for hours. Horses have an amazing ability to recover when things fall apart. Horses seem to be able to live in the present, even if the past <laughs> was earlier the same day. If I see the road ahead as impossible because in the past things fell apart, I will never move toward healing and wholeness. And that's the story. Thank you, Cowboy Randy. And, of course, uh, right now, you're thinking of somebody <laughs> or something or maybe you and um, how you do that. But I, but I thought that line particularly, um, I knew I should be dead. And, you know, there, there are some stories about that that uh, strike me. And uh, so if you'll just give me a few minutes uh, after a little break here so I can take a sip of water and be ready for the day, uh, let me tell you a couple more stories about, uh, hey, I should be dead. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas, and that certainly is one of them. We'll be right back. One of my heroes uh, is a man named Earl Nightingale. And uh, many years ago, he uh, had a radio program, uh, you know, and uh, he had the voice. Now, it was just part of who he was. And uh, unfortunately, probably from the fact that he probably smoked too much, but he had that voice. And I always liked that. But uh, he, in effect, did a radio program that literally went around the world and uh, every day. It was a thoughtful program about life and motivation. And uh, you should do a little study if you, if you haven't ever heard about him. And then after he did this on radio, he went on to uh, found an organization called the Nightingale Conant Organization, which I believe is still around. But it turned out a variety of some of the top-notch motivational personal improvement, personal development, leadership programs. Not a lot of the pop and slop you have today, but good stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he went on. But he died rather early in life. Uh, I think he was just in his 60s. But he one time told the story about his risk-taking ability, and it was uh, this. He was actually a young Marine on the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that's right. And... Um, he didn't die. In fact, I think his story is that he kind of got blown off into the water. Uh, he was a Marine guard. He wasn't in the bottom of the ship, and he, he survived the attack on Pearl Harbor. And he said, that not only changed my life, but he said, I knew from that day on that I should be dead. What could happen to me now? What could be worse? Uh, what could hurt me worse? And that since I should be dead, I will be someday, it's time to live life fully and uh, full of risks 
take advantage of opportunities and not be afraid because I should be dead. I also remember a story that struck me deeply because we were, we were living in Europe at the time when uh, the celebration of the 40th anniversary of D-Day took place. And of course, there were thousands of uh, American uh, survivors at that time. There were a lot more of them in 84. And uh, they came over there and uh, their stories were broadcast all around the world and uh, particularly on uh, the Dutch television where I was watching at that time. And there was one story uh, where uh, a gentleman uh, simply said this. Uh, He said, well, I had to get over the fact that uh, I should be dead. And he said, here's what happened. He said, I was was just 19. I was scared to death. And we'd survived the beach. And a lot of my friends hadn't, but we were survived the beach. And we were up inland. And uh, there's where the, uh, some of the hand-to-hand and some of the fighting went forward and back and forth. And he said there was uh, shots fired, artillery coming in, and uh, in the midst of, a, of a, an engagement, he said, I hit the ground, jumped into, kind of dug a hole, put my head down and waited. And he said, uh, and finally when the shooting kind of eased up, I put my head up and there was a German soldier with his rifle pointed right at my head. And of course, (laughs) I lost everything, ready to die. And then I noticed just briefly that, you know, the soldier was older than me, obviously, maybe 10, 12, 15 years older, late 20s. He was older than me. And uh, he looked at me and looked at me. And then he shook his head and he said, Raus, Raus, which means get, get. And I got up and ran away. And he said, ever since that day, I realized that nothing that happened or anything that I was going through uh, would, could hurt me, could really, I should be grateful because I should be dead. You know, and a number of us may have had some of those close call experiences, but I do think that uh, as we go through the difficult times, just like Randy, <laughs> um, and he's achieved a great deal in his life, but He still remembers that um, there was that day, thanks to a horse named Outlaw, (laughs) who was anything but an outlaw. He should have been renamed Graceful, and um, because of that, uh, he lived a life knowing that he was grateful to be alive, because he should be dead. Well... I'll just let that story sit on your head or those stories sit on your head on this Monday evening and you can decide uh, what you're going to do about them and how you might think differently. I'm Stan Houston, storyteller, broadcaster, and uh, occasionally somebody who is at least seeking to share a touch of wisdom. We'll be right back. We'll be right back simply to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your time. And um, I'm still right now thinking of something that happened to me that, um, uh, oh my gosh, I came so close not only to being hurt, but hurting people I loved and uh, something, something at the last moment just went right. Nothing happened. So Perhaps uh, that also reminds me that I have a lot to be grateful for no matter what I go through, and perhaps the same is true for you. And remember, a thankful and grateful heart is seldom a fearful heart. If I can be of any help to you in our life and business coaching and in the work we do, and finally getting you into your storytelling, radio telling, radio teaching mode, just reach out to me, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com. What are you reading? <clears throat> what are you thinking about? What are you praying about? What are you hoping for? And what do you want? What do you want? All the best. Till next time. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.